Back with the G7 summit in Japan now fully underway, the, wa the war in Ukraine is a real focus of the gathering. The Financial Times reports that the group of seven leaders, the world's wealthiest democracies, are gearing up to impose new sanctions on Russia in response to its invasion of Ukraine, specifically targeting export controls and Russia's ability to sell and ship diamonds which is one of the few remaining industries in Russia that has not been dramatically affected by Western sanctions. Also developing the last few hours, the news that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will attend in person the final day of the G7 summit. That would be on Sunday. No further details have been publicly shared due to the obvious security concerns. Meanwhile, there is new reporting out that due to an accounting error, the United States thought it had sent more weapons to Ukraine than it really had, meaning $3 billion more billion in funding has been freed up to go toward the defense of the war-torn nation. The Pentagon just found an extra $3 billion. The Times reports that the mistake was caught months ago, but the Pentagon and State Department didn't inform congressional staffers until yesterday. Joining us now live from the G7 in Hiroshima, Japan, Washington correspondent from Bloomberg TV, Henry Hordern, who is one of the reporters who broke the news about Zelensky's upcoming trip to Japan. Henry, great to see you. Uh, tell us how this trip came together and what do we think we'll hear from Zelensky when he reaches the G7? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of cloak and daggers, obviously, around President Volodymyr Zelensky's travels, Jonathan. There's also another wrinkle to this that me and my colleague Jenny Leonard reported, which is that before he comes here to Hiroshima to address G7 leaders, President Biden and others, he's actually also stopping in Saudi Arabia. There is an Arab League summit today, so he will be addressing those individuals. That is going to be one to watch because... Uh, Assad from Syria will also be there for the first time in 13 years. And of course, you know, Russia's military has propped up his entire government. But then he's going to come here to Hiroshima. And the message he's going to be bringing is one that he's been bringing to European capitals over the past few weeks. And this is about more aid and ammunition as Ukraine is preparing for this counteroffensive to really try to gain control that Russia has during the past uh, year and a half of this war. So, Anne-Marie, we just mentioned the G7 leaders are looking to impose some new sanctions against Russia. Give us the analysis there of what they could really mean. Is there a sense that these go far enough that it might finally start to have an impact to mm -hmm. certain sectors of the Russian economy? So there's been a barrage of sanctions across the entire Russian economy. And I think what you see now from leaders is they're really trying to manipulate it to make sure that those sanctions are being used to the harshest degree. It's about closing the loopholes, going to third party countries that potentially Russia is still leaning on to import things in the industrial industry, the things that they can use as they continue to wage this war. So I think it's really about closing those loopholes, making sure things like the price cap are still being diligently used in the marketplace so that Russian oil is still hitting uh, the global market, but they are not reaping the highest benefits and the profits. The other addition we are hearing is that they will also start to track and trace the lucrative diamond trade that comes from Moscow. But Jonathan, they are not going as hard as uh, potentially some would like. The United Kingdom is flat out banning it, but they're out of the European Union. What the G7 is coming out saying, they're gonna track and trace this, but they are not slapping all out sanctions when it comes to the diamond trade. Uh, this is particularly difficult for some European countries like Belgium, and they say that that trade will just go elsewhere, but you do see more incremental steps from the G7 to really try to continue the onslaught of sanctions on the Russian economy. And Anne Marie, lastly and briefly, of course, President Biden uh, has cut short his trip to Asia. You know, the, the fight over the debt ceiling back here at home is, has overshadowed oh, yeah. his presence there in Japan. But what do we expect to hear from him for the rest of the weekend summit? So this morning, he had a call with his legislative staff, that group that is really working re with Republicans to try to hammer out the agreement on the debt ceiling. He's going to constantly be asked about this, Jonathan. He really does feel like he has one ear in Hiroshima and one ear back in Washington, D.C. The mood music is pointing to potentially things are getting better in terms of striking a deal. Speaker McCarthy said maybe this weekend we could see a deal in principle. Um, but all of this, obviously, we have to caveat with the fact that there is no agreement just yet. Patrick McHenry, chair of the Financial Services Committee, a key ally of McCarthy, saying that there is not an agreement yet. 
But the mood music is starting to change. And I think for the president, that is really important. He wants to make sure, one, that while he is here meeting with uh, global leaders, he's still keeping an eye on potentially the biggest risk to not just the U.S. economy, but the global economy while he's on the ground here. And of course, too, he wants to make sure that he is bringing that message to these leaders who are quite concerned about what a default would mean for their own economies. Because of course, you know, treasuries are the underlying bedrock of the global financial system. Washington correspondent for Bloomberg TV, terrific reporting this morning from Amory Hordern, Travel Safe.